That's the Australian Centre for the Moving Image. There's nothing like shooting under a bright light. Well, today we're kind of reviewing the 0.95 Speedmaster. But in the end, it's become the 24 to 70 and the 50mm 1.8 Z mount lens comes into this review just by weird default. How about that? Okay, well we are out here shooting with the Megadap and the 0.95. I did a firmware update because they told me to do a firmware update, but I don't think it's working that well. So I'm not going to be able to shoot really the video face test that I wanted to do, but I am going to be able to do stills. Here we are in the city. Nice enough evening, bit of a sunset happening here. Yeah, so I'm a little bit disappointed that the 2.0 update for the focus adapter is just not working at all. It seemed to be working when I installed it, but um, out here in the field it just, it's just keeps hunting. Not good. So we're going to do some stills because the other stuff isn't going to work. And I have to say I'm shooting on the Z6 II right now with the 24-70 to 2.8 at 2.8 and it's delicious and it's easy and it works. Gosh, it looks good and cinematic. We're shooting with the flat profile and it's just so nice. And already I'm finding the Megadap and this 0.95 lens difficult it's slowing me down and versus the z lenses versus the 50 mil 1.2 well right now maybe another firmware update although i've checked online and someone's suggesting to go back to 1.3.1 if we go back to 1.3.1 it might make this experience better but i'm just a little bit spoiled by how the Z system, I'm not thinking about the gear, I'm just thinking about the shots. And that's way more important to me than anything else. It's actually more important to me than money. Now this is my job, this is what I do for a living, I've done it my whole life. But if the gear just melts into the background and I have an idea and I can capture it, well, that's the goal, that's the success. You don't want technical difficulties in the field. You don't want that. It's a nice night though. We're still in summertime here and it's, it's cold. <laughs> it's very strange. The world is very strange. Sorry, we're on camera mic here, so it's gonna be a little bit windy. Basically, we're shooting manual because the autofocus doesn't wanna work. And this is a 2.0. Let's move it round to... Now this is 0.95, so we've got lots of light, even even getting it to focus manually is struggle, struggling and it's saying that's in focus clear. Clearly it's not. So um, there we go there, but we definitely have more flare, chromatic aberration, wide open, and by the looks of it you've got to go from 0.95, click, 1.4 is a little bit better, click, two seems to get us to where we need to be but that's not that's not why we buy a 0.95 lens to use it at two not when the Nikon 50mm 1.2 Z exists and so far with my almost two months two months yeah no more than two months actually of using it it's a winner winner chicken dinner the moon looks nice. Uh, we're shooting on DX right now. So if we hit record up here, this is what the viewfinder can see. Uh, we're shooting here at, sorry, F2. Yes, F2. Sorry for the wind noise. 50th of a second 4K 24 flat profile on the Z7. There's a beautiful cigar quality to 
the sky. I'm shooting in flat profile and whether I correct it back to this colour I'm not sure but it's lovely soft gentle cold summer's night light and there's the moon behind one of our skyscrapers we're shooting on the Z62 with the 24 to 70 at 2.8 no I lie we're at 3.2 4k 24 waiting for that uh, that firmware update that's coming and probably by the time this video is out will have arrived so I can shoot 4k 60 well it just cannot find back look at that <laughs> where is the Z6 with the 50 mil it would be done it's interesting it's just not working right something's not right I think it's the firmware update because it's just out of control bad there we go that made it feel better Z62 effortlessly focuses at 2.8 with the 24 to 70. It's just seamless, quiet. It's just starting to get a little bit of rain. Now the Atomos Ninja here, it doesn't like rain. Everything else can handle the rain. But this thing here, it can't handle the rain. Well, this is my sort of moody night. I don't know if it's going to rain any more than the few spots that it just was. But it's lovely. And this 24 to 70 2.8, gosh, I'm loving it. It's a revelation. And I tell you, it has nothing in common with its sibling, the F24 to 70 VR. Nothing in common. It is a far superior piece of tech the way it feels the way the zoom feels how lovely the focus is the weight the stabilization I mean I'm shaking that a lot and that's really just going yep no problemo and that was at 70 again I am moving quite significantly and it's just going yep whatever no problem at all Oh, that's a lovely scene. I love that. With all its bits and pieces. So here we are on the river using the 24-70 and well, that's lovely looking Buka I reckon for a 24-70 zoom. Don't you love the way water just does that? So good. So what I'm trying to achieve here is this is where this lens might come into its own. When you're doing sort of more kind of interpretive images, not quite so literal, where they're soft, and abstract. The night has fallen and now we can play with the light and see what it does. There's some interesting balls there, interesting shapes. Now we are at f.095 so shooting in the dark and getting some interesting shapes and textures and colors kind of works quite well that's the city right there i like those colors and shapes and textures and drag it into focus as well but jesus struggling oh got to get a bit because there should be no problem so here we are at 1 50th of a second not sure if you can hear me over the music 1 50th of a second 0.95 f-stop at 64 ISO it is most definitely night time and we've got no problems
shooting under available light. As we can see there on the light, bottom right hand corner, a bit of chromatic aberration. If I stop down, it helps. And here's the Z6 at 4K with APS-C or DX crop. Love it, looks great. And this, this is what it would look like if we shot 4K 60p as well. This is the crop. Now let me show you without the crop. This is what the frame looks like without the crop. We're at 70 mil on the 24 to 70 2.8S. And of course 70 becomes 105 at DX or APS-C. Images from the Speedmaster 0.95 shot on the Z7, the original Z7. No metadata comes through for the lens. Even so, that is not the aperture that I told the camera. Uh, but we can see it's the Z7 with the latest version of the software, which is just from very late last year. Thanks, Nikon, for continuing to update. And I was going through these and I thought, well, I might as well show you my process. So... Obviously, you've heard some of my thoughts so far through this video. And what, what I'm doing here is, you know, how, if you had a lens like this, how do you make it work? How do you get away with its specific characteristics? Uh, the balls here, the out-of-focus balls here at the back aren't necessarily the greatest known to man. The chromatic aberration is not the greatest. Some of the out-of-focus areas are a bit wobbly. They're a bit unsettled. But this might work fine for some people. Some people might really, really like it. Anyway, we'll just keep pressing on through the images and go back to the start as well where I started. But these are images I'm looking at for the very first time. So we're doing this together. That's not bad, but you know, we the thing is, there's flaring and ghosting, as we can see, quite significant. There's chromatic aberration, quite significant. And, you know, that's just that's just not what we're here for. And when you have the 51.2, which just does this in spades, and you can do it wide open, you can shoot that lens wherever you want to shoot it, and it's just rock solid, as you can see in this video up here. And, which was a Z7 II review, but I was using the 50mm 1.2 wide open uh, in almost every image, and it just, it just rocks. And you've also got the 50mm 1.8, which holds its own unquestionably, holds its own. It's only 1.8 versus 1.2, but still, it's cheaper than the Speedmaster, I think, depending on who's got what on sale. And it's autofocus built in, and it controls chromatic aberration flaring so much more than this lens. But you can still get an image like this one, which maybe some would love perhaps some cinematographers would love this how do we make this you know more interesting more scary do we do that to it maybe something like that this is what it actually looks like when the background here is in focus and you know this this is pretty good it's pretty good an 80th of a second we're at 200 percent as you know i was having trouble with the focus so you're not quite sure exactly what's in focus let's have a look at 100 percent. but yeah that's probably where it's supposed to be that looks reasonably good but this lens and this is wide open so this is at 0.95 by the way so it lacks contrast it lacks sharpness wide open compared to compared to the 50 millimeter 1.8 and the 50 millimeter 1.2 z lenses it's interesting because it's similar to the original 50mm 1.2 manual of old, the Nikon lens. It's got a lot of things in common with that lens from what I see here. But just the sharpness levels here are just, are just not what I'm used to. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to use these shots when normally with any other lens taking things out there, no problem. Of course, the light gathering capabilities of a 0.95 are amazing but again it's not that different from a 1.2 is it and then the 1.8 is not that far away and with ibis and being able to push with higher isos it sort of becomes negligible like i've shot this at 1 25th of a second 
I could easily shoot it at one tenth of a second, thus collecting the extra light required for a lens that's a little bit darker. So it's hard for me to argue with this lens when the 50mm 1.8 is here and it does everything better except the 0.095, but that other lens does everything better. And as we've already discussed, and I'll show you some other images. So this is wide open with these bottles being in focus. So we're zooming in a fair bit, as we can see, because this is 45.7 megapixels. Go to 200%, that's what's in focus. So you can kind of see that it is in focus. It's just, it's soft, and we've got a lot of green and purple going on here. You know, it's not... I, look, I have been totally spoiled by the Z lenses, and they just don't do this stuff. And then if we jump to f2 so this is 0.95 and then this is 2 we can see things change this is sharper it's all sharper but of course f2 is you, you may as well use the 50 mil 1.8 and you're going to get a better better results across the board similar size lens don't need an adapter to autofocus handles chromatic aberration ghosting flaring everything else so again to show you this is 2. f2.0 and this is 095 and you can just see it's just gets softer and and that's the exposure difference by the way i didn't adjust the exposure to match so we're just literally looking at me changing the aperture and that's it anyway i thought that was interesting let's go back up to the top with some other images so here's a here's a daytime image the same complaints are there like look at this up here this is this is a bit rough i find this out of focus area here a bit jittery what is in focus is the clock here in the background. That's 100% pixel for pixel. This is not camera shake. We are at 1 1,000th one of a second, 64 ISO, wide open. It's not the look I'm looking for in my out of focus areas, I don't think. It's a fine enough shot. So is this. Now I changed to using the flat profile, which is actually how I shoot on flat and you can see the flat profile just gives you a little bit more in the shadows. It does other things as well, but I like it. See, over here, flat. So what we can see here is the light area here. It looks okay, but once it's out of focus, look how it changes and we get all these purples appearing. And then the last image I think I wanted to show you is this one. And what, what, what I'm doing here is, and I can just make the exposure similar, maybe not, not, not there. So we're at 0.95 and the focus is here on the bridge. This is 200%, not bad, but look, it is soft and flaring and chromatic aberrating and so on and so forth. But a lot of these problems disappear when you go black and white. So this is another solution. If you're a black and white photographer, almost everything that we're talking about that's a problem doesn't really exist in black and white. The softness does, but even that can be controlled by contrast. You can actually create a sense of sharpness through contrast. But that's something else to think about. Down in the corner here, we can see these are exactly the same settings, but this is the difference between F2 and F2. 0.95 but have a look at the light here for example so if we zoom in on that 100 percent it's pretty well controlled but as we go to the 0.95 not well controlled the chromatic aberration look there's still chromatic aberration here but better controlled and obviously this jittery background is more jittery our focus is down here, but again, you can see how, how much that changes just by going to F2. Aberrations over here. F2 is where you want to start to get better images. But again, I'm not sure I see the point when you can get the 50mm 1.8 if you're shooting this at F2. It's on the off occasion that you might use it at 0.95 and you can somehow get away with it because there's no direct light sources in the image or you're going to make it black and white. So then you just have to think about all those parameters 
to get away with using the lens. This is visually. Obviously, the Megadap adapter, which was auto-focusing, is another whole issue. We're shooting on the Z62 with the 24 to 70 and gosh, it's gorgeous. Everything just stays in focus. It's smooth. I'm shaking it, it's solid. It's so good. What's happened here tonight is quite interesting. I've gone out to shoot with the Megadap and the uh, Speedmaster 0.95, but it hasn't worked out. So my camera that was gonna capture all of that, I've ended up this could be a review about the 24 to 72.8, which could be the smoothest lens to date. I'll explain what I mean. As was suggested in my comments today, would you be better off with the 50mm 1.8? Well, what I'm finding is, is this lens doesn't really start to become similar in regards to flare and contrast and chromatic aberration until it gets to two, F2. And considering the 50mm is cheaper than Nikon Z 50mm 1.8 and it has built-in autofocus, I think there's no doubt that that's clearly the choice that you would make. It is a 0.95 maybe, but I'm not sure it's really usable except for specific situations. What I wanna show you now is images taken on the same night but with the glorious 24 to 70, which has just been a revelation to me. Now, I haven't touched these images much. Just to kick it off here, we're on the Z62. The new software hasn't arrived as of recording the new firmware. And the lens is the 24 to 70 2.8S. I borrowed this from Nikon and I thought it was so good that I bought it. It's blowing my mind. It's such a versatile and easy to use lens. It just does. And if you look between the images I took with the other lens and this, it's just it's just a different, like this here, this rendition here for me is verging on kind of medium format pop and sharpness. Like it's just nuts. Great color rendition, great contrast just it's just controlling and remember that other image that was out of focus and this was all chromatic aberration all over the shop there's there's nothing going on here this is wide open at 2.8 obviously it's not at 0.95 because that's as far as i can go but there's nothing to clean up there it's solid this is an image of the megadap and the speedmaster on the z7 some other lovely little images here it's just, it's just a smoother, simpler, more integrated experience. As I said before, you, you stop worrying about the equipment and you just get on with creating images that you like. It's a completely different experience. Again, here's this image. Not exactly the same everything, but you can just see how different it is when it comes to chromatic aberration, like those tiles, clean. And... We're here on the Z6 II, so it's a different megapixel count, but still it's a pretty fine result. So the 24 to 70 2.8, it gives you color. It gives you just crazy sharpness. Here we are at one eighth of a second at 2.8 ISO 100. And let's just go into 100%. And I don't, I don't know what much more you can ask for in regards to quality in the corners, quality in the corners. Dynamic range, it's just tremendous, just tremendous. This side is not in focus. Clearly, my focus is in there, so that's a bit weird. I don't quite understand how the blackboard... Oh, the blackboard must be much closer to the window than it feels. This was a review for the 50mm 0.95. Really, I'm happy to conclude. It's the 50mm 1.8. That's really the one you should go with. But the hero of the story tonight is the 24 to 70, 2.8.
it's a really good lens. Just before I go, I wanted to show you this footage here. This is the first shoot that I've had in a very long time in our city gallery space, which doubles as a photo studio. It's awesome. We were setting up two different lighting scenarios here, but that is not what this video is about. I'll do that some other time. In regards to the Speedmaster and the focusing issues, well, that's Megadap. I've already reached out to Megadap in regards to the firmware, and hopefully we can work out how to work it most optimally. I've already made my comments about what I think of the lens optically. That's what this video is all about. As always, it has been so very good to see you. I do hope to see you again. If this is your first time here, please do subscribe and I will see you very soon. There is now over 300 episodes you can watch right now. Please share, please like, and I will see you very soon. Pretty sure the speed limit here is 40 kilometers per hour. I'm pretty sure that wasn't.